Hello, everyone. Welcome. You are joining the Regimen Pro webinar about uh, skin care, integrated skin care, so skin care and different dermatologic procedures. We are on today with Dr. Patricia Ferris, and we are very excited. She has a really great presentation ready for you guys all about integrative skin care. I see a lot of you joining right now, so I'll just give you a couple moments to get acclimated. While you're joining, um, on the bottom of your screen, there is an option for Q&A and an option for chat. Any questions that you have throughout the presentation, you can populate um, in the Q&A and Dr. Ferris will try and answer as many as she can at the end of her presentation. So, hi Dr. Ferris, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Super All excited. Right. My name is Risa, and let me tell you a little bit about our renowned speaker today, Dr. Ferris. So Dr. Ferris has been practicing dermatology for over 30 years. She also uh, so she built up a phenomenal practice called Old Metairie Dermatology and then sold to private equity maybe, what, five years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Sorry, I was off of Sonoma Dermatology. She's always had a big passion for a holistic approach in dermatology and especially within skincare. Because of that, she's been a strategic consultant with almost every single different cosmeceutical company. She wrote a textbook, um, Cosmeceuticals and Cosmetic Practice, that was published in 2014. She's also written a book for consumers called The Sugar Detox, which was all about nutrition and skincare. Um, she's a very active member on the, of the AED, the ASDS, the Women's Derm, and she's been published in no, many national media outlets and TV stations all around the world, all about cosmeceuticals and skincare. So we're very honored that she's here today um, as a founding member of Regimen MD and a board certified dermatologist. So without further ado, welcome, Dr. Ferris. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll do the hard part and see if I can share my screen. Can you see? Not yet. Not yet. So for those of you that just joined, also if you have any questions as she's speaking, you can populate them in the Q&A and we will, she can either answer them while she's speaking or at the end. So, so. we're having technical difficulty, of course. No problem. So what else can I tell you about Dr. Ferris? Dr. Ferris, um, her practice is just outside of New Orleans, which is um, actually called Old Metairie. And she took her training at Tulane. What'd you say, Dr. Ferris? I said, I'm going to go back here and see if I can share my screen. I'm so sorry. We had this down so good, but it didn't seem to be working now. There it is. I, we're coming yeah. up. Perfect. All right. So thank you everyone for tuning in and we hope you enjoy the presentation. Are we on um, slideshow mode yet? Nope. You just have to put play from the beginning. Perfect. Yay! Okay. Old dogs can still be trained, right? So I'm excited to give this talk today. I've only given this presentation once, but I became very intrigued through my consulting work with companies like SkinCeuticals and many of the other cosmeceutical companies of this whole new notion of integrated skincare. And we define integrative skincare as the incorporation of clinically proven and highly efficacious topical formulations with cosmetic procedures. And I hope my goal on this talk for you today is for you to understand that the skin care that your patients use before the procedures and during the procedure and certainly after procedures really makes a difference. And that some of these high grade cosmeceuticals, which as you'll see very quickly, have got a lot of testing behind them and can really make a difference in the performance of the procedures that you're doing on your patients. So if we look at the literature today, and I've learned so much preparing for this today, there are 
studies now that have been done using cosmeceutical skincare with almost every cosmetic procedure we perform, everything from our lasers and light sources to radio frequency procedures, even injectables and body contouring have now been looked at. And I wish I could present all the studies, but there's so many of them that I certainly cannot do that. But I want to hit some of the high points so that you know the good work that many of these topical skincare companies are doing in trying to again, help us get the best performance out of the procedures that we're doing. And obviously we can position skincare products pre-procedure, and I'm gonna to explain to you and show you some studies why that's important. So we call that priming the skin for the procedure. We can position them immediately after where they soothe the skin and expedite the healing process or post-procedure where they can improve the outcome, improve patient satisfaction, and even mitigate post-procedure complications. So skincare is really important. And I believe this whole notion of integrated skincare actually grew out of a collaboration that started between SkinCeuticals and Solta Medical that um, markets the Fraxel laser. And I remember when this was all happening, Roy Geronimus, I believe, was instrumental in orchestrating this collaboration because he was interested in looking at whether the fractionated lasers, which were fairly new at the time, could be used to optimize our delivery of topical skincare through the skin. And of course, we know that these microthermal zones that we create with our fractional lasers um, create micropores. And lo and, lo and behold, his studies did ultimately show that we can enhance skincare delivery. This was the initial study that he published. It was presented as an Aslam's poster. He did uh, non-ablative fractional resurfacing with the 1927. This was performed on ex vivo skin. So this is not in patients, but in ex vivo skin samples. He used three different settings and they used HPC or high performance liquid chromatography to look and see how much of the product was delivered. In this case, he was using CE Ferulic, which is the antioxidant serum many of you are familiar with that comes from SkinCeuticals. This shows you on the left the control with just the dye lying on the surface, but if you look at the picture on the right, you can see the dye and the CE Ferulic beginning to penetrate into that micropore. He also looked at the HPC, and as you can see, there was a 17-fold increase in the penetration of the CE Ferulic with the non-ablative fractional resurfacing. So the question becomes, we know we can increase skin delivery with fractionated lasers, but what happens when that occurs? Is there a benefit? So they did a safety and efficacy study. The first part, the safety study, was 18 subjects who had a single treatment on their forearm with the 1927 non-ablative laser. And the second was a 40 patient clinical study. This was a uh, blinded study and it was a randomized study where half of the patients put CE Ferulic on after the uh, laser treatments and the other patients had the laser alone. These patients had a series of six facial treatments over six, uh, three months, I apologize. It was a three month study. And so this was the efficacy uh, study that they performed. So let's see what they found. Well, if we look at the, the forearm, this is the safety end of the study. You can see that the laser alone has significant erythema, more erythema than the laser plus the serum. The patients tolerated the serum well, so they then proceeded onto the studies on the face. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the histology on the forearm first. And you can see here, there's some epidermal remodeling that you can see. Uh, the, the top banner is the patients who use the CE Ferulic. The bottom banner is the patients in the control group. So you can see that the microthermal zones that are created by that non-ablative laser are beginning to heal very quickly. The, um, this is 14 days post-op on the right. And you can also see pigment removal. Again, looking at the top bar, the patients using the CE Ferulic. So this was the, the safety study and the histology that went along with those uh, 18 patients treated on the forearm. When we look at the data from the efficacy study, two things um, are really highlighted here. Number one, a quicker resolution by two days of erythema, edema, and heat sensation. So the patients felt better and they looked better quicker too. And then also there was an improvement in both dyschromia and overall appearance in the patients in the CE Ferulic group. And you can see those are the patients with the red bar. And you can see there was some significant improvement. Not all of the parameters were better with the CE Ferulic, but those two parameters were statistically significant 
at the three month mark. This is one of the patients after the five treatments uh, with the laser. She gets a really nice result, you can see. Um, improvement in dyschromia. She's got a great radiance of her skin. Uh, her skin just looks great and much improved. So we found here with these initial studies that we can increase the penetration of the product and that the antioxidant serum has benefits in terms of healing and in terms of improving the outcome. Uh, Jill Weibel, about two years later, took this a step further, and she looked at 15 men and women with ablative laser resurfacing. She again used the CE Ferulic product, and she had a vehicle control. The patients used it immediately after, and then once a day, she followed these patients for seven days. She also did biopsies for molecular evaluation, and we'll look at that data. Uh, Jill noted that the patients did, uh, just like Roy saw in his studies, there was a significant improvement in both edema and erythema. So the patients got better quicker and started looking better quicker. You can see here, these are some of the patients she published in this study. You can see this girl on her left side used the CE Ferulic and the man, she must have been randomized to the right. This was a split face study. But you can see a d difference certainly in the amount of crusting uh, in both of these patients based on which side had the serum and which side had the um, vehicle alone. But the interesting thing in this study was that she looked at fibroblastic growth factor levels. And what she found was that in the placebo patients, fibroblastic growth factor reduced significantly right after the procedure, five days post-procedure, and it remained depressed for three months. When she patients used the CE Ferulic, it mitigated this reduction in fibroblastic growth factor. So this is at least a theoretical way that we can say that these antioxidants may be protecting the fibroblasts, keeping that fibroblastic growth factor elevated and enhancing wound healing. So this is a great paper and some excellent work done by Jill Weibel and she's contributed so greatly to the laser literature. Now antioxidants aren't the only things that have been looked at with laser resurfacing. Peptides have also been looked at, and the studies I'm going to talk to you about uh, in the next few minutes are studies using the elastin products with the trihex technology. Elastin products and many other peptide products contain small molecules called matrikines. Matrikines are tiny molecules that penetrate very readily into the skin, and they have advantages over growth factors, which we know are good for healing skin, but they're such large molecules, they can't be uh, penetrate the skin very readily. So peptides have the ability not only to generate new collagen and elastin, but also to clean up the skin as well. And what elastin calls this is skin bed preparation, and I love this concept because it positions products before the procedure. We know that if on the left side here of the screen, you see these degenerated collagen or elastin fibers. This is what photo damaged skin looks like. If you can add a product that starts mopping up these bad uh, fragmented collagen and elastin products, it readies or primes that skin to better, better accept the procedure. And that's exactly what these peptides do. These peptides penetrate very readily and they work very quickly within the first few weeks. So when they designed their clinical study, they had the patients pre-treat with their procedure enhancement system. This contains two products that has the pep have, have the peptides in them, as well as a, a, a petrolatum-based um, product as well. But they had the patients prime their skin for three weeks prior to an ablative laser resurfacing procedure, and then they followed the patients for 12 weeks. And this is just to show you that the laser settings were evenly paired. There was 10 patients in the experimental group, the group using the procedure uh, enhancement kit. And then there were five patients in the control group. And the control group uh, was using Vanapply, which is an ointment-based uh, product. And you can see here that the investigator rating for healing with the tripeptide hexapeptide group was better at each time point and reached statistical significance at seven days. There was also a significant reduction in erythema and exudate, so the patients started looking better quicker, and this was significant at day three. And then finally, less tenderness, stinging, and burning, which also was significant on day three. So again, we're making the patients look better quicker and also feel better from that procedure. 
Also, at the end of the study, it's always nice to know if the patients like the products and the patients, there was a very high um, long-term satisfaction with patients saying they wanted to continue the regimen, they felt more confident in the way their skin felt, and that they would recommend the treatment to um, other patients. These are some of the pictures that were published in this um, article, and you can see the woman on the top with the trihex uh, peptide uh, procedure kit. Obviously, by day four, she's looking a little better than the Vanafly patient, and certainly at day seven, uh, she's completely healed, and the patient in the Vanafly group is, is looking like lagging a, a day or two behind. But this is a really nice, I think, um, set of experiments showing the benefits of some topical, uh, well-thought-out topical skincare regimens in the pre, uh, immediately post, and then uh, post-procedure um, setting. Another place we're seeing cosmeceuticals being used a lot is in microneedling. And this is very similar to what we talked about with the fractionated lasers. Our microneedling procedures also create microchannels through the stratum corneum, through the epidermis, and when we use the longer needles, we can even get product into the dermis. So this is a, an assisted delivery, so to speak, very similar to what we see with the laser procedures. A very interesting study was done comparing microneedling with transanamic acid to transanamic acid alone. And this was done in 30 patients. It was a melasma study, a split face study. And the patients had a once a week microneedling procedure and used the transanamic acid right afterwards. There was a sham control device. Um, and the patients used the TXA product at home in between the microneedling procedures for 12 weeks. They did photographs. Um, as well as use the meximeter to look at pigmentation. And what they found was that the blinded clinical assessment showed improvement in both, both groups. And you would expect that knowing that transanamic acid is uh, being used fairly widely to treat hyperpigmentation. But there was a statistically significant difference between the groups at week 12. The melanin index, again, decreased in both groups, not surprising. We know TXA works, but there was, again, a statistically significant difference between the groups favoring the group with the microneedling procedure at 12 weeks. And then, interestingly enough, in addition to improving melanin from melasma, they also were able to demonstrate improvement in brown spots, uh, lentigines, which this study was done in China, and lentigines are quite common in Asian patients. And it's hard to make lentigines go away, as we all know, without uh, lasers. But they did see a gradual reduction in brown spots, which was statistically significant um, between the groups at week 12. They didn't see much improvement in the TXA group alone. There was no change in transepidermal water loss or hydration, which they were just concerned the microneedling may cause. So these are some nice photographs you can see here. This is a patient uh, with melasma. She gets improvement um, over the 12 week time course of the study. And this is a patient with brown spots and you can see the le left side of her face was randomized to receive the microneedling procedure and the right side of her face was not. And you can see some nice improvement, especially down below um, in these photographs here, significant lightening of the skin. So this is a nice study that really shows the augmented benefits that microneedling can have in treating hyperpigmentation and driving those um, ingredients that we know work really well, but they obviously can work better with delivered with microneedling. With microneedling, I want to just mention this study because it was published in JAMA Derm several years ago, and I think it deserves just a minute of attention in terms of safety. Um, a lot of people are using a lot of different products with microneedling and a lot of different topical skincare products, many of which have not been studied. And in this paper, they reported three case reports, uh, two patients who had had dermapen procedures plus a specific serum, Vita Serum C. I've never heard of it. I'm unfamiliar with the product. But several weeks after the microneedling plus vitamin C procedure, the patients developed granulomatous reactions on their face. Uh, some of them, there were, there were three patients, and the photographs here represent the three different patients. Two of the patients developed systemic symptoms. They had complete workups to rule out connective tissue disease, negative cultures. The workups were negative. But interestingly enough, they did develop systemic symptoms, which were 
really signs of delayed type hypersensitivity reactions. They did both have positive patch testing to the vitamin C product. So we need to remember when we're doing these penetration enhancing procedures that we may be introducing things into the skin that are antigenic. And so I just mentioned that study as sort of a cautionary tale because um, particularly I think uh, with microneedling, it's, it's so easy to apply for, uh, topical products before and after the procedure. Now, another interesting place we're seeing companies study topical skincare, and it's sort of um, peculiar, but I think when I present the studies, you'll see why. That is with use with our injectables, both neurotoxins and fillers. And I love this study that was published by the research scientist, the chief medical officer of Alaskan Skincare, because it shows how well thought out and how um, well formulated their topical skincare products are. This product was developed specifically for to be a post injection serum. It is called Enhance and it contains their tri hex, the tri peptide and um, hexapeptide technology, so the collagen boosting technology, but also contains products that can make an injectable procedure go better. For example, lactoferrin, which has broad antimicrobial activity, obviously a benefit in a patient undergoing something like a filler procedure. Phosphatidylserine, which induces phagocytosis of red blood cells and could hasten resolution of bruising. And then a really interesting array of botanicals. Xylitol, which is an anti-inflammatory, but also has anti-biofilm activity. Phytoene and phytofluene are colorless carotenoids that downregulate PGE2, so they downregulate inflammation. Arnica Montana and marsh, wheat, uh, marsh tea actually work together to uh, act as anti-inflammatories and to reduce bruising. So this is a well thought out, well formulated product. They did an interesting clinical study and their challenge was to create bruising in patients and to be able to follow these bruises over time. So they created the bruises in two ways. Two ways. One, they drew blood and injected 0.1 mLs of the blood into the forearm of uh, into both forearms of the patient, and then they drew blood and didn't tamponade it. So they allowed a little bit of a hematoma or a bruise to occur where the blood uh, was drawn. They used an objective measure that I'm unfamiliar with, the skin color catch, to look at the degree of bruising. Apparently, this is an industry standard for that. And the patients were randomized to receive either the topical bruise product or the bland moisturizer. And it was a uh, right versus left arm type of study. Uh, they did some biopsies, which we'll take a look at, and did some standard photography. So you can see here on the top where the enhanced product was used, again, with some interesting ingredients that could hasten the resolution of bruising. On days two and days three, you do have significant differences compared to below, which again is the control, the comparator, which I believe was Cetaphil um, lotion. But um, you can see there's significant improvement in resolution in that bruising on days two and day three. And by day seven, the um, enhanced serum has almost completely cleared the bruising. This is using their objective measure. They found a 73% less bruise color intensity, again, at days two to three compared to the comparator. And then here's some of the histologies where you start seeing what this um, trihex peptide can do. You can see that these uh, fibroblasts are full of elastin fibers. That's what these uh, stringy blue fibers are. This is fibrillin, which is also essential for the production of fibrin. So that's fibrillin-laden fibroblasts. Again, this is from our peptides, and then also an enhancement in collagen. So it's such an interesting product and it's such a well thought out product. Um, and I think it's a great option for us to use in our uh, filler and neurotoxin patients. They also use the same product in a group of patients who underwent microneedling RF. And not to get too detailed here, but basically what the red shows is swelling or edema. And so you have the comparator on the top and the enhanced post-injection serum used on the bottom. And you can see there's so much less swelling in the patients who are using this enhanced product. 
Again, this is due to the botanicals and their ability to mitigate things like prostaglandin E2 and NFKB. So this is a product that can be used after a number of procedures, uh, but was specifically developed for injectables. I also like this paper that was published where they looked at the use of HA5, which if you're not familiar with it, is a hydrating product from Skin Medica. And they looked at it in combination with neurotoxin injections. This product is an interesting product because it has both immediate and long-term benefits. The immediate benefits are hydrating benefits, and these come from the fact that it has high, medium, and low molecular weight hyaluronic acid fragments, as well as cross-linked hyaluronic acid. But it has long-term benefits because of the fact that it contains peptides that can boost hyaluronic acid production. So it not only adds hyaluronic acid as a moisturizer, but it revs up hyaluronic acid production. And it also has things such as polysaccharides and um, stem cell extracts that can help with epidermal homeostasis. The study was interesting. They looked at 20 female patients who received neuromodulators for their lateral canthal lines. The patients had to have moderate to severe periocular wrinkles, and they applied the HA5 to the face immediately after the injections, and then twice daily for eight weeks. They evaluated the patients immediately after at two weeks, four weeks, and at eight weeks, and they did photographies as photography as well as patient self-assessments. And it's no surprise that the crow's feet improved because of the neurotoxin. So there was statistically significant improvement from baseline. Dark blue is baseline, by the way. Light blue is eight weeks. So this is our neurotoxin effect. But what was interesting was they found there was such great improvement over the eight week time course of the study in areas not treated with the neurotoxin, under eye fine lines and wrinkles, forehead wrinkles, cheek wrinkles, periocular fine wrinkles. And you can see this really well demonstrated in this patient who is at baseline with no product on her skin. In the middle, she's 15 minutes post-injection with the HA5 moisturizer on. You can already see some of the fine lines and wrinkles coming out. This is, of course, a moisturizing effect, but certainly makes a patient happy. And then on the right, again, this is at eight weeks, so our neurotoxins may be starting to go down a little bit, but she gets a great result and you can see smoothing of a lot of the uh, wrinkles on her upper eyelid, the wrinkles on the cheek, the under eye wrinkles that she had at baseline. So this is the kind of thing that I think tells us that what you put your patients on will matter and what how their um, acceptance or their excitement about the procedure is gonna be enhanced by using products like these. And this particular, um, study did a patient self-assessment and you can see at baseline, we're down at you know 60, 70% of the patients um, happy, but look at, at the end of the study, using the product twice daily, 100% of the patients really loved the product. They were happy with their procedure. They felt their skin looked rejuvenated. So again, when we're doing procedures, even if they're injectables, we don't wanna to discount topical skincare because it can definitely make patients happier with their procedures, and I think also gives them some added benefits. The last thing I'm gonna mention very briefly is body contouring. And as everybody knows, this is the fastest growing segment of the cosmetic market. And it's also a place where our cosmeceutical skincare products can be positioned. One of the first papers published in this area was published by David Goldberg, and he looked at the complementary effects of SkinCeuticals body tightening concentrate in patients who were undergoing radiofrequency for the buttocks and the thighs. The patients, it was a double blind split uh, body study. The patients received two skin tightening treatments and they applied the products to one side of the body daily. Um, there was blinded photographic evaluation at the end of 12 weeks. And what he found was there was a statistically significant improvement on the side treated with the body tightening concentrate. And you can see there's a really nice um, before and after pictures. The arrow here shows you the side that was treated with the body tightening concentrate. So again, 
topical skincare products enhancing the benefits of in-office procedures. Now, many of us in our practices are doing cryolipolysis and Elastin once again conducted what I think is a very interesting study looking at their transformation body treatment again with the same trihex technology we saw in the enhanced product and in their um, post-procedure kit. This was a double blind comparator controlled study it was the transformation body treatment versus Cetaphil. And they had 11 female patients undergo two cryolipolysis treatments on their upper arms. These are two 35 minute treatments. They followed the patients for 24 weeks. They did some standard photographs, but they also used an interesting technology I'd not heard of where Canfield is able to take a 2D photograph and convert that into 3D space. And you'll see some of that data. The, not surprisingly, the patients using the transformation bodies saw some improvement that was probably the most dramatic at um, week eight. The two graphs begin to come together around 12 weeks, but again, the body contouring product begins to outperform the Cetaphil Bland Moisturizer at the 24 week time point. Skin laxity, which is something that a lot of patients who have cool sculpting are not happy with. Skin laxity was improved by the body treatment, uh, trihex body treatment rather quickly. And as you can see at 24 weeks, there was statistically significant less skin laxity. So this alone changed the way I handle my cool sculpting patients because I think that this is a product that really offers a value added um, to our cool sculpting patients. And then finally, this is the, um, the technology where the 2D um, photographs are turned into 3D and they were able to find significant improvement here, a twofold uh, percent reduction in the um, area of, um, in the area of the, um, uh, that was cool sculpted, I'm sorry. So anyway, this is a, a really interesting study and I think it shows again, the augmented benefits of um, using topical products with our body contouring. Uh, procedures. And this is their before and after pictures. You can see the patient at baseline. She definitely benefited from cool sculpting. If you look at her at eight weeks, she gets a great result at eight weeks. And then at the 24 week mark, you can see improvement. The left side, if you hadn't guessed already, was the side that was treated with the transformation body product. So she has a little bit less laxity on that side and uh, also a great result. So with that, I will um, be happy to take any questions. I'm sure I zipped through that quickly. 30 minutes or bust, how'd I do? You did great, thank you so much. I think that was a lot of really good information. I know that Dr. Ferris did go really fast and um, people here are probably coming in at different levels of skincare education, but this is recorded and we will be sending out the recording so it's easy for you to go back and relook at anything um, that Dr. Ferris spoke about. So we do have a number of questions um, for you. And if anyone else, a lot of you signed on after the little introduction. So just so you guys know, there's a Q&A feature on the bottom. You can input any questions now and Dr. Ferris will try and answer as many as she can. Your questions can be about skincare in general, about um, you know, integrating it with your procedures um, or about regimen pro. So here we go. Um, let's see. Do you package skincare into the price of the procedure? So I do not, although I have a lot of colleagues who do. Um, our patients are usually on skincare regimens anyway, or before they have procedures. When we do consultations on procedures, we will, if we need to change the products they're on, we will change the regimen at that time. Um, as you know, we don't sell a lot of products in the office because we dispense primarily through our internet platform, but that gives us the opportunity to see the patient, to go through the procedure, uh, get the consent signed and, and get all of the information to the patient, and then to order the products which are sent directly from the manufacturer to the patient. We will, for procedures very often, or we will always write out the products that we're going to have the patient use, the order they're going to use them in, how they're going to use them, make sure that they get everything sent to their home before um, the procedure. But I think it's fine if you want to bundle the products in. Um, we just don't do that because our patients are usually on cosmeceutical skincare anyway, and many of them can just stay on their skincare. Got it. 
Okay, so I'm going to remove, um, take down Dr. T um, Ferris's presentation. So if anyone wants to take a screenshot of the email and the website first, so that you, can, you guys can just see her a little bit more while she's answering these questions. So, all right. I'm just, okay, perfect. So, um, how important is it for a patient to modify their skincare regimen before the procedure? You know, I learned a lot from looking at the elastin studies. I mean, I've primed patients for procedures. For example, if I'm going to do a chemical peel for a patient who has melasma, I'll always have them on some sort of skin lightening agent before. I always tell them the less pigment I have to lift, the easier it is for me to lift it. So let the cosmeceuticals do some of the lifting. But when it came to some of the resurfacing procedures and I saw some of the work that was done with elastin and how quickly those peptides could start remodeling the dermis and what a great advantage it was to not have that damaged collagen there. Um, I think we could, can certainly um, make a case for priming, priming patients with uh, products that contain peptides such as the Trihex technology before other types of procedures such as resurfacing procedures. But I do love the notion of priming the skin, you know, getting the skin as ready to accept a procedure as it can be. Interesting. Okay, um, let's see. Would you recommend using a glide gel during microneedling? You know, we don't use a glide gel during microneedling, um, but I think that some do. So I, I don't really have a strong hay or nay on that. Okay, great. Um, so are the products you showed really better than Aquaphor or Vaseline I've been using for decades? <laughs> I think they are better. And I hope that was the take home message on the, of the talk. Um, first of all, as I tell people, you know, it's important when making patient recommendations that you follow the science. And while I certainly don't think that there's anything wrong with Aquaphor or Vaseline, and those are the things that we used from the beginning, but these products are definitely better. I mean, they provide added benefits. I mean, I love the study that position that compared to Vanapply, which was one of our old favorites. It's basically a petrolatum based product, but you can see significant improvement in uh, resolution of erythema, edema, crusting. And I mean, the way the patient heals matters. It matters to the outcome and it matters to the patient. So I think these products definitely are better than drugstore products. And I think as this integrative skin care begins to, uh, we see more and more studies coming into this arena, we're going to find um, more benefits to these products and more ways that we can use cosmeceutical products. Got it. And Dr. Ruth Tadaldi chimed in in the chat. If some of you didn't see, she says, yes, exclamation mark, they are better. <laughs> he agrees. Of course she okay, did. So what would you say to a patient that has used the same skincare products for years and they're, they're hesitant to try something new? Oh, we have so many patients like that. You know, if it's a sensitive skin patient, I understand because there is some adversity for them if they use the wrong thing. But I really believe that you should change up your skincare regimen from time to time. Um, you know, I guess as a skincare junkie, I have all kinds of stuff that I use and I don't stay on the same thing all the time. So I tell patients, you know, it's good to introduce, you know, if you've been doing retinoids for a long period of time, go and use peptides for a while. If you've been, you know, alpha hydroxies have a role um, in rejuvenating and exfoliating the skin. They, they do something different even than um, a vitamin C does. So there's reasons for using different types of products. And I think people who get stuck in the rut they get better for a while, but then I think they ultimately plateau. So I do think it's important to change up your skincare regimen. And by the way, there are new products coming in the marketplace all the time with new technologies that we didn't even have five years ago. So while I think all dermatologists still think tried and true retinoids and tried and true alpha hydroxies, many of them are even unfamiliar with some of these new ingredients. And that's why we enjoy doing things like this so much because we have the opportunity to educate. And I learned so much, um, again, looking at these studies. It's going to change the way I treat my own patients. So this is a good piggyback follow-up question to that. But if you're jumping around with different skincare products, do you rotate every, um, like, between a couple products every evening? Or are you giving a full month for each one? You know, I, I layer a lot of products. And I know um, a lot of patients 
like to layer, but don't know how to layer. So I usually tell them the most concentrated product goes first. So if I have a serum, it's usually a more concentrated product. So I'll put that serum on first. In the morning, I'm almost always have them with some sort of antioxidant defense serum. And that can be layered with um, their sunscreen in the morning. And then at night, you can layer peptides with retinoids, with uh, bland moisturizers if you need to just add skin hydration. So I think layering products is the way to go and to get added benefits. That way you're not changing your regimen every month or something. I see. Great. Rex Bright says, great presentation, Patty. Hi, Rex Bright. <laughs> All right. Um, that's a good one. Do you speak to your patients about lifestyle recommendations? Oh, I really do. Yes. So, you know, I wrote a book called The Sugar Detox, which sent me into a tailspin for years on nutrition and health. And we really do offer a holistic approach and we will very often talk to patients about not just skincare, but about nutraceuticals, about um, de-stressing, de doing things that, you know, can make them live a better life in general and you'll look better in the, at the same time. So we do, we talk a lot about lifestyle. Um, I live in the South, I'm in the New Orleans area. We have a tremendous amount of sun exposure here. We have people outside all the time and we try to be realistic about lifestyles. I'm not gonna tell people not to have fun and not to go on their boats and not to do the things they wanna do, but I need to teach them how to do it in a healthy way. So we, we fight lifestyle a little bit here because we like to eat a lot and drink too much sometimes and go in the sun too much. But, you know, there's a nice, as we say, joie de vie, joy to life in the South that um, I think sometimes makes people live better, happier lives. I love that. Okay, and Dr. Chidaldi also chimed in and said, patients like a specific regimen after an expensive procedure and when science backs the findings. It is well worth your time to explain simply the science of what you're suggesting to the patient. Yeah, perfectly said. And there's so much science to follow here. And this was just a, a, a tiny bit of the things that I, you know, could have presented. But I think it's important to understand, as Ruth said, that the patient really does deserve to have the best products and deserves to have the best outcome. And if you give your patients good topical skincare, you're going to make them happy. Mm -hmm. They want good skin. All right. This one has a lot of big words, so please um, don't, I hope I don't butcher it too much. Do you recommend a PO polypodium lysodomas plus or minus niacinamide concurrently? So I love polypodium leucotomus, and I put all of my skin cancer patients on niacinamide. So that, that uh, HelioCare advanced, I think it's called, which has both, is a total winner. For anybody who has a lot of photo aging and certainly anybody who's had skin cancer, the niacinamide studies should, every dermatologist should be using niacinamide in their skin cancer patients. I mean, it, causes, it gives you a 25% reduction in the incidence of skin cancer, basal cell and squamous cell. I mean, that's significant for patients who have a lot of skin cancers and believe me we have them down here who've had dozens so all of my patients are on it you can get it on amazon by the way all right what if a patient doesn't want to spend the money on the skincare you're recommending to go with the procedure you know i think that this goes back to ruth's comment if you explain the benefits of the skincare the patients will accept that um i try to be very cost conscious with patients i really do i i you know, I try to be cost, con cost conscious with them. Most patients coming in for something like a laser resurfacing can certainly well afford to also buy some good skincare and they are already on it anyway, by the way, in our practices. But, um, you know, if somebody can't afford it, we, we certainly can make adjustments. Got it, okay, and let's see. I guess this one's because they know you wrote that book about the sugar um, detox. So what's the best way to recommend a patient cut sugar from their diet? Are there any patient friendly facts you um, like um, that you'd like to deliver? Yes, we always talk about nutrition, especially with our acne patients because the sugar acne link is so strong and the sugar aging link is strong as well. So those are the two arenas mostly we're talking about it. Um, you know, simple things patients can do are cut out sugary drinks, 
cut out junk food, which is processed, highly processed white carbs that turns into sugar in the body very quickly. And if you get rid of those two things alone, that's a huge step in the right direction, particularly with kids who tend to drink a lot of sugary drinks and eat a lot of junk food. Um, I don't take things like fruit away from people because it, it, the polyphenols and things that are in fruit are too good for you to not have them. So I don't eliminate all sugars in patients, but I try to steer them to natural sugars. So I tell them, if you want something sweet, pick up a piece of watermelon and not a donut. Um, you know, make, make the better choices and never sugary drinks, never diet Cokes, never those things, you know, water and green tea are great options for those. Um, the sugar detox diet was written by a nutritionist named Brooke Alpert from New York City, and she wrote actually a brilliant diet. And we've had tremendous patient success with patients on the sugar detox, um, patients losing tremendous amounts of weight, feeling much better, um, getting off of medications like metformin. Uh, it's incredible what getting off sugar can do. Now, we always tell patients, especially if they're pre-diabetic or diabetics, they have to talk to their doctor first because we don't want to drop their sugars, obviously, too low. So we work integrally with you know, internal medicine doctors. But uh, getting rid of sugar changes change your life. I mean, the energy that you have when you don't have the sugar highs and the sugar lows, that's what kills you. Oh, I'm glad I'm not drinking a sugary drink right now while you're telling me that. I have water. <laughs> okay, two more questions. Um, if anyone else has any, this is the last call. So do you have patients take home their skincare the day of the procedure, or do you have them have everything ahead of time? Well, we usually order things ahead of time because we're ordering through Regimen Pro. So we will um, have the patients have all, everything at home when they leave the office and you know, again, have everything written out so that they know exactly what they're going to use. Um, but we want them to have that stuff in hand when they leave the office. Okay. And last question, Dr. Ferris, do you believe in using retinoid containing products for prolonged periods of time it can be problematic in terms of reducing the telomere length and therefore potentially aging the skin? I have read studies suggesting that, but you know, we have got over 30 years of clinical use with retinoids, maybe even 35. I don't know. I'm trying to remember when those first studies were. We have used topical retinoids for such a long period of time that I think if they were making us look old, we would have probably figured that out by now. Um, the way retinoids work in the skin, the way they attach to retinoid receptors, the way they boost collagen production, downregulate inflammation, um, I just can't help but think that they're good for aging skin. I mean, I've used a retinoid since I was in my 30s, and I'm not going to give it up anytime soon. All right. Well, thank you so much. That was so helpful. I hope all of you enjoyed that presentation and this great time, one-on-one -on -one time to ask Dr. Ferris some questions. Again, this was recorded, so we will be sending this out, emailing it out to all of you tomorrow um, or over the weekend so you can have um, some time to digest it and maybe share it with any of your colleagues or your skincare specialists in your office. If you have any questions about regimen, we'd be happy to help you. Um, Ruth says, party. You were great. <laughs> so thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you so much, Dr. Ferris. Um, I hope this was educational, informative. And if anyone has any questions about any of these products that we talked about, the science or about regimen and how to bring it into your practice so you can get all your patients signed up and ordering online. It makes it so easy to get your patients what they need especially after a procedure when you might only be using a certain product after a procedure so you don't have to house the inventory all the time. Yep. Great. Um, and so you can keep trying the newest, best thing without having to bring everything into your office every time. So, of course, we're a little biased, but really there is a lot that regimen can have to offer. So we look forward to hearing from you. And if nothing else, have a good evening and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Dr. Ferris. Bye.